Metal Sonic has been one of the coldest villains in the Sonic franchise since his initial appearance in Sonic CD. The first thing this Metal Menace does when you see him is swoop in and abduct Amy. Heck, even when Metal Sonic was being created by Sonic Team, one of the keywords given for his design was menacing, and they nailed it on the head. From his deep glowing red eyes to his sleek metallic design, Metal Sonic looks like an intimidating version of our speedy blue hero. Whenever this dude shows up, you know he means business. He has a cold demeanor about him, and he's always out to prove that he is better than Sonic. I've always liked seeing Metal show up in any form of media, whether it's the comics, shows, or games. You never know what's up his sleeve. Sometimes he'll lie low and wait until the right moment to strike. Other times, he'll join our heroes if things get dire enough, but mostly, he is there to pose a threat. If Eggman wants to get rid of a nuisance, his go-to man is Metal Sonic. But lately, something has fell off, or rather, fell off, because now it's gotten to a point where I don't get as excited anymore when I see Metal Sonic. It's almost like he's become cannon fodder, or just another bad nick for Eggman to hopelessly throw at Sonic. The writers seemingly don't know what to do with him. He isn't reserved for being the right hand of Eggman's wrath, being called out to push Sonic to his limits. His purpose has been reduced, and with it, his status. Many villains throughout media, whether it's books, movies, or games, have a second in command who is there to intimidate and pose a real challenge for our heroes to overcome. Take for instance the Lord of the Rings. Sauron has the Istari Saruman who does his best to prevent the Fellowship from achieving their goals. Or Star Wars, Emperor Palpatine oversees the galaxy but uses Vader to hunt down the Rebel Alliance. Even in Halo, the Prophets use the Arbiter as an instrument of their will. In the very same way, Eggman has constructed and used Metal Sonic to be the number one deterrent against Sonic and his friends. All of these villains pose a great threat to the heroes along their journey, and through most of it, they are more prevalent than the true villain of the story. In a way, they are just an extension of or a tool of the one that they serve, constantly hounding the heroes, causing pressure that moves the story forward. And for the most part, Metal has played this role in the past. In Sonic CD, the player is motivated to go through the levels and catch up with Metal Sonic, not only to save Amy, but to save the future of Little Planet. In Sonic Heroes, he takes things up a notch by surpassing Eggman and becoming the true villain of the game. But it's after this point where I would argue that Metal has become nothing more than an overglorified bodyguard to Eggman, which is really disappointing to say, because like Shadow, Metal was someone who could go toe to toe with Sonic in physical combat and speed. But now he's just being tossed randomly into Sonic games with no levity to his appearances in the mainline series, and I honestly have no problem with Metal being in these games, but the issue is if you take him out of most of these games, it really doesn't have any effect on the narrative. Remove Vader out of Star Wars, Sauron out of Lord of the Rings, or the Arbiter out of Halo, and ask yourself if the story would be any different. It totally changes the dynamic, right? Metal Sonic isn't the main villain in Sonic CD, but if you remove him from the game, the game feels a lot different. You don't have to go and rescue Amy, she was never captured. Metal Sonic Sonic isn't causing chaos in other timelines, and you don't have an intense race against him. Now compare that with the appearances that Metal makes in Generations and Forces. They don't quite equate to anything in the long run besides nostalgia baiting, and granted, that's the whole point of Generations in the first place, but Forces doesn't really have an excuse. As a matter of fact, Metal Sonic plays a bigger role in the story of Freeriders than he does in both of those games combined, which is kind of sad, but it's apparent that Metal has been heavily sidelined in the game. However, the comics and shows are a more complicated story altogether. The IDW stories have done a decent job with the characterization of Metal Sonic, especially towards the start of their run. The comics pick up after the events of Sonic Forces, where the world is still recovering from and dealing with the remnants of Eggman's army around the world. We find out that during Sonic Forces, Eggman was upgrading Metal Sonic to Neo Metal like we saw in Sonic Heroes. However, this time without any rebellious code in him and giving him a final form. For all intensive purposes, Metal Sonic was going to be Eggman's most powerful weapon to be used to crush what was left of the Rebellion. Unfortunately for Eggman, Neo Metal's upgrades weren't finished until long after the war had ended, and this is where Metal Sonic's story picks up in the comics. He continues Eggman's plans for world domination on his own, taking Eggman's empire to war once again in hopes to eliminate Sonic and his friends. When Sonic first encounters Neo Metal in the comics, he is forced to make a hasty retreat 
after finding out how powerful he truly is, putting a seed of doubt and fear into our hero. Making Sonic uncertain about the situation makes the readers nervous about it as well, and I believe this is how Metal's character should be. Of course he is more powered up here than usual, but even in his base form he is a stronger version of Sonic that has the capability to match his speed. Further into this arc, Neo Metal leads the Egg Fleet to Angel Island and takes it over. Now, Sonic and Knuckles go to confront Neo Metal in hopes to stop him, however, Neo Metal goes into his super form using the power of the Master Emerald and proceeds to mollywop the two until Shadow arrives to get a shot in while Metal is distracted. Finally in this arc, Metal activates his final form, Master Overlord, which essentially turns him into a Phase 3 boss for most games. He's more powerful, but a slow brute. It takes the combined efforts of Sonic and his friends to take Metal down, but this arc really showed us how powerful Metal could be at the height of his power. The next time that Metal shows up in the comics, we see him in his standard form that we're used to, and he gives a good bit of trouble to Sonic and Silver, and for the little fight that it is, I think that it was pretty well handled. Metal gets a few good hits in on our heroes, but the overwhelming power and experience of Silver and Sonic is just too much for him to handle. The last few moments that I really enjoyed from Metal in the comics was when he came to the aid of Sonic at the tail end of the Metal Virus. Being immune to the virus, which only worked on organic beans, Metal was able to rush through a horde of infected and use his speed to help Sonic scale the giant monstrosity that Savik had turned into, even sacrificing himself at this point since Savik can control machines. Right after this arc, Metal would have an encounter with Shadow in order to keep him off the trail of Eggman. This is a fight that Metal Sonic would ultimately succeed in, giving the ultimate life form quite the beating. However, it's after this moment that I felt Metal Sonic would show up and accomplish very little in the comics. For instance, in the Imposter Syndrome miniseries, Eggman sends Metal to go after the newly introduced characters, Surge and Kit. When Metal arrives at the scene, he would put up an okay fight, but would eventually lose in a pretty bad way, having his circuits fried while he's taunted and knocked to the ground. Now, this is when it starts to get a bit ridiculous with how many times Metal Sonic is defeated in a short window of time. And I want to make it clear, I have no problem with Metal Sonic losing fights. He is the villain after all, but the amount of times that he's brutally defeated or stopped in his tracks here starts to get ridiculous. So in issue 52, which is not long after the events of Imposter Syndrome, Metal Sonic is in hot pursuit of our heroes who are injured at this point in time. He's easily taken down by some boxes that are thrown at him, and after recovering he attacks head on and is easily taken down by Kit alone this time. He comes back once more this issue to confront our heroes again, but is briefly stopped by Bell who tries to convince him to stop. He hits her and moves towards Sonic, but needs to retreat in order to help Eggman. While everyone is looking for Surge, Metal runs into Sonic and Tails and they scuffle again, but this time they end in a truce, all in agreement that they need to find and stop Surge. Once they've all caught up to Surge, they throw down. Surge gets mad that she's getting teamed up on and basically says that this isn't a fair fight, but at this point she's enhanced by the Dynamo Cage, and I also found this kind of funny because she sure didn't mind when she double teamed Metal before. Anyways, as the fight goes on, Metal only gets one lick in on Surge before proceeding to get beaten to scrap by her. She goes after Eggman to bait Metal into defense and catches him off guard, using him to beat down Sonic. Metal tries to defend himself using Black Shield, but the Dynamo Cage allows Surge to drain the power out of Metal, making him a useless shell once again. This is only four issues after his last defeat. A few moments later in the same issue, Eggman gets Metal back online, but he's almost instantly restrained by Kit. Now if we jump ahead for more issues, Metal Sonic would follow Tangle all the way back to where Sonic and his friends were located. However, instead of calling for backup or alerting Eggman so he can send additional badniks, Metal Sonic would rush in and try to fight everyone all at once. I feel that this is kind of uncharacteristic for Metal Sonic who is actually pretty smart. Rushing in to take on all of Sonic's friends at once isn't really his style. Regardless, he does so and is tackled right away by Tails and Amy. Amy then uses her Pico Pico hammer to collapse the part of the building he was standing on, sending him down below with the rubble. He would appear later this issue trying to take down Sonic, but is instead subdued by Tangle. Later inside Eggman's base, Sonic and Metal would square off, and Sonic would make light work of him until Eggman shoots at Amy which distracts Sonic long enough to give Metal the upper hand. The Diamond Cutters would then rush in to save Tails, Amy, and Sonic. The latter would send Metal flying out of the base with a well-placed kick. Metal Sonic wouldn't be done quite yet, as he hops onto the back of a Turtleoid and grabs Sonic. However, Sonic would easily free himself once more with a kick, sending Metal into an attack from Blaze and Omega. So that 
that's where we are with Metal in the comics. It's not terrible, and I'm more so just glad that we have him in these stories, but he feels fairly inconsistent in terms of his threat level, and especially recently just seems like he can't catch a break. Now, there is one more recent iteration of this character that I want to touch upon, and that is Chaos Sonic from Sonic Prime. This version of Metal Sonic was teased to us in the trailers leading up to Season 2 of the show, and many of us were excited to see him. And let me just say, he did not let me down. This character was really fun, instantly being thrown into the mix of the show and living up to his name by causing a lot of chaos. We see just how powerful he is as he takes on multiple heroes at once and gives Sonic plenty of trouble. The entire episode, Sonic can't get away from Chaos Sonic who is constantly hounding him. So you might be wondering, what is the issue with this version of Metal then? And the big problem is that he only appears in one episode out of an 8 episode season. This character is introduced in the back half of the season, and while he causes more trouble for our heroes than any other character, Sonic and Nine are able to destroy him for good. And it's really quite a shame in my opinion that this character was so underutilized, but it's staying in the trend of the games where his appearance is so brief or unimportant that you could take him out of the show and nothing much changes. Sonic Prime Season 2 had a lot of action, so I'm not sure why they went with fights that we had already seen between characters instead of giving us more with Metal Sonic. The fact that Chaos Sonic can match Sonic's speed alone made him more intimidating than any of the other villains if you ask me. I think Metal Sonic is one of the best villains in the Sonic franchise, and I'm sure that Sonic Team does as well, which just makes it all the more weird that they don't seem to want to use this character in any of their games other than brief appearances that have no narrative impact on the story. The comics have given the most justice to our robotic friend, but I'm hoping we see Metal return in a triumphant way. Who knows, maybe we'll get a glimpse of Metal Sonic in the new Sonic movie and it will resuscitate his role in the franchise. For a character that has been a staple of the Sonic franchise for a long time, I think that he needs to be given some room to grow, like how Eggman recently in Frontiers got a character arc that none of us expected but we all came to love. That's just my thoughts on Metal, but let me know what you guys think. Is this character being underserved in the stories and games he appears in? Let me know in the comments below. For more Sonic stories and lore, check out this video here. That's all I have for you guys right now. As always, I wish you all the best. Take care. Peace.